Well guys, I've been trying to shoot this video for the past week and between 40 degree days and now, constant rain, been a bit of a drama. But anyway, we've got a break in the weather, so let's try and sort out the last episode of this extended drawbar series. Well guys, the camper is back from welding stigs the draw bar is completed and it is an absolutely superb job. When I went up there, there was a lot of discussion about how they were going to weld it. Um, they, they've drilled the plug holes out to be a larger size. Um, they've used special welding sticks on it and it was all just a little bit over my head and I just left them to do it. However, the end result is absolutely superb. I can't tell where the change is from the old draw bar to the new and um, I'm just so happy with it. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all those people involved in it. Um, you guys are champions. When I was taking this up there, as you would have seen in the last episode, I've had to take, it's probably a half hour trip, and the quickest way is to get on the freeway. You would have seen me take off this box, and by taking that off, I've taken most of the drawbar weight off this thing. I've piled a whole heap of rubbish inside the camper to try and get some drawbar weight on it when I was taking it up there. It wasn't that successful. Uh, however, the trip up there was absolutely horrendous. I got on the freeway and took took it up to 60 and this thing was just wagging behind the car like there was no tomorrow it was it was horrible so got off the freeway and just trundled along at 50 and she was pretty pretty loose on the way up there but um got there uh, and I think I needed a nice uh, coffee on the way home but anyway when I've picked it up it was like I've dropped off one camper and picked up another I was very hesitant about what's this going to be like driving at home because there's still similar drawbar weight on it. However, there's probably a little bit more because of the weight moving forward. Uh, I had this drawbar inside the camper on the way up there and on the way back, it's on the drawbar. So, so the weight is here. However, when I've got home, I've measured the weight on the ball and I've got about nine or 10 kilos. So if let's say the camp is 650 to 700 and I should have about 65 to 70 kilos ball weight, having 10 is not much at all. However, the interesting thing was on the way home, it was a completely different camper and there was no sway, like none, with 10 kilos of ball weight. To the point where I was going around roundabouts and the like and that's when when you change directions or you'd hit a big pothole on the way up there, it would just go loose. Coming back, it didn't do that at all. And the change that this drawbar has made to this camper is just incredible. I got on the freeway on the way home and with butt clenched, <laughs> thought I'll take it up to 60, then 70, then 80. And in the end, I was sitting on 110 and this thing was just sitting behind me, not moving at all. There was no sway, um, nothing. Now I've taken some footage since um, I've brought it home and you can see that the camper's not swaying at all now. And this is still with the nine or 10 kilos of ball weight because I just wanted to show that before I start adding things to this. With the wheels further back from the vehicle, it's just not twitchy at all. Now I've got a little bit of footage that when I put any vehicle connected to the car, I tend to drive down the road, flick the back out a little bit, make sure it centers, and then it's like, okay, we're fine to go. And I've done that um, with this camper in this setup, and you can see it just pulls itself straight into line again, which, which is awesome. You can see the front of the drawbar moving up and down a little bit, so it's trying to pitch backwards because there's no weight on it. But because it, when it pitches backwards, uh, it doesn't, because of the lever effect, it doesn't push back as much, the trailer doesn't go into sway. So it's, the end result is what I wanted. And it just goes to show that you don't need to run that much ball weight to get handling characteristics once you've got your drawbar length and your, your axle where it should be. So really happy with the outcome. Now after mentioning in my last video uh, with building a new drawbar box, Scott has pulled up with a piece of angle and said, where do you want it? We'll get them to do it at the same time. So that's 900 out from the camper shell. And my idea is, is that we'll have a box that's now that width. You may think it's too far along. However, the side effect of doing this is that I can now jackknife the trailer. And I can also jackknife the trailer to where the new box will come to. And that's really important if you're gonna take this thing down any tight tracks. 
I've been racking my brains with regards to box design. Um, and last weekend I spent a couple of days just browsing shops and online to try and find maybe a ready-made additional box to put on here. However, it's got to the point where I think I actually just need to make a complete new box. So um, look forward to that. <laughs> It's actually doing my head in at the moment because there's a couple of things that I want to fit into this and um, I'll just go and show you. Okay, so this is the stuff that I want to fit into this tongue box. We've definitely got to have the fridge. It'd be really nice to have the Weber. It, I need to have the switchboard, the 12 volt switchboard, and I need, I need to have both 100 amp lithium batteries in it. I would really like to get the Darche Annex, the tent part that goes under the, the Darche awning in that box too. So the whole camper would be self-contained and nothing to do with the camper goes in the vehicle. That's my aim. I don't know if it's going to work out that way. I'm thinking a box similar to a forward fold camper, whereas they're quite long, um, a little bit of an angle at the front, and one or two doors in the side. I haven't, haven't looked into that yet. It's a bit of a Tetris thing. I've drawn it all up. Um, it's quite tight, but I think it's doable. So a lot of it comes down to do I buy fridge slides for these two, or do I make them as I did last time? And d making doors and things like that. So that's all to come. As I said, I did look to use the original box that I have here um, and buy something to fit in front of that, but I really couldn't get the sizing that I'm after, so I've just thrown that aside. There's a couple of really interesting things that have come out of this though, and when a lot of guys build these things, you see they just throw the axle a long way back in, in the body, and it's like, yeah, I've got a kitchen or whatever in the back. Um, I think you've got to look at your load placements, which I've tried to when building this. I've always tried to get more weight forward because that's what we needed. But the interesting thing is, as it was, and I've always said that the axle is slightly forward than what it should be, I had to put a lot, and I mean a lot, of um, drawbar weight on this to get it to handle nicely behind the vehicle. And whilst it was always twitchy, because the original trailers were, and it was basically the same chassis with a different body on it, um, it was the amount of drawbar weight that I needed to, to make it handle nicely. Now with the axles probably where they should be in relation to the hitch, um, because of this longer drawbar extension, it's showing that even with 10 kilos of drawbar weight on it, which is nothing, the handling characteristics are really, really good. So I probably don't need as much drawbar weight as what I had before, um, and it'll be interesting to look at it as I start piling on drawbar weight. There's a couple of drawbacks now with this because of the length of the drawbar, it's not all positives. We've lost some uh, ramp over angle underneath this um, because it is longer. Our turning circle before, there's a place where I filmed down a dirt track and I've got to go down, it's a dead end and I can do a U-turn. Before with the shorter drawbar, I could easily do a U-turn. Now it's a three point turn. Um, However, I can jackknife it far, far more than what I could before. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, I do have to back up a quite a long, narrow uphill driveway to get into my house. Yesterday it was raining and it got to the point where in two wheel drive, because it was so slippery down there because of uh, algae or whatever on the concrete, it wouldn't back it up and I had to put it in four wheel drive. But it's now, it's now slow to react to wheel inputs, which is really good when you're going forward, especially at speed. However, when you're backing, um, before you could move, move the steering wheel slightly and it'd react. Now you move the steering wheel slightly and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna do it in a moment. Now we're turning. It's probably easier to back because of that. They're the drawbacks and there really isn't a lot of drawbacks. This is all positive stuff, especially now that I've got a forward mount for the box. It's all moving forward now. I don't, now don't have to drive this thing looking in the rear vision mirrors all the time. I used to drive this just on the rear vision mirrors, just keeping an eye on where it was because it was quite easy to get thrown offline when you were hitting bumps because it was quite twitchy. Now, even the little bit of driving yesterday, and it was probably about an hour, I, you can relax with it. It's just like any other trailer. It's, um, yeah, it's there, we keep an eye on it, but she's behaving herself and it will only get better with more drawbar weight. So overall, 
it's an excellent thing. Um, this has made the most difference of everything that we've done compared to the tuning, and I will say tuning with the, the shocks and the hitch. They were tuning aspects. This has made massive changes with regard to handling and it's all positive. So that's about it for today, guys. It's raining again. My camera equipment's getting wet. Um, I've really enjoyed this part of the build. Uh, the, the chassis development and handling development, I really enjoy. Um, we've got the box build to go. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye now.